Hello and welcome to another episode of Beyond the 3D, the podcast. My name is Michael J. Russ. I'm your host. And today's episode is not going to be that long, but I believe it will be profound. Uh, We lost a basketball hero, one of the best basketball players in the world, by the name of Kobe Bryant last week. And whether it was Kobe Bryant we lost or uh, another celebrity, we, we lose people who are in the public eye all the time people that we've admired, people we've enjoyed seeing on the big screen or on stage, wherever. And we lose people in our personal lives, people who don't have the notoriety, yet are heroes to us, to us all. And today I want to talk about what you can learn from Kobe's life, Kobe Bryant's life success. Um, Based on a, a question that I heard him say he asked himself in an interview um, years back. And it happens to tie into zero adversity. When someone passes away, when you lose someone in your life, zero adversity is about perceiving, responding, and letting go of that situation. Zero adversity teaches you to, in line with, it's an element of of alchemy, of, of inner alchemy, personal alchemy. And the whole idea behind practicing zero adversity is so that you can have a framework for approaching situations like uh, that come upon you very quickly, uh, almost blindsiding. Whether it's a, a personal challenge, something happens to you directly, or something that happens indirectly. This Kobe Bryant situation is an, is an indirect an example of indirect, uh, exp- indirectly experiencing adversity. And adversity is not a thing as much as it is an experience, how you experience an event. If you experience the event in a negative way, that is an adverse situation to you. And it's not that the event is adverse, because we all come from a different place when it, when it comes to experiencing something. Uh, for me, because I've experienced uh, loss, personal loss, deep personal loss in my life, uh, in my lifetime at least four times, uh, people very, very close to me, uh, who died too early, way too early. Uh, it, it, I come from a different space. I view the death of Kobe Bryant or anybody else who's in the public eye from a different space, from a different place. And that's experiential. So I want to kind of get into this episode and help you understand that, that what I'm looking to do here is, is shift your perception. Shift your perception to something positive from negative. Yes, you can, if you're in Los Angeles, you can, you can go to the memorial, you can stand around with people, you can mourn, you can grieve, you can place flowers uh, where everybody else is placing flowers uh, outside his home, outside his foundation, etc., uh, or outside the arena uh, where he used to play, uh, and the Lakers play. You can do all these things. That's an active part of participating in the grieving process and the mourning process. However, You've got to take it farther than that, and I, by that I mean it's a good idea to find the treasure in the loss. You know, what can you take from this? What can you learn from this that you can apply to your own life? Not just that he was a great basketball player, that you loved him and loved seeing him and loved the, 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 you know, seeing him score or seeing him in person in the arena or watching him on television, admiring him, wearing his jersey, blah, blah, blah. That's what I'm talking about. Talking about what can you take, this man had a philosophy, as everybody does. Everybody who has reached the peak of success that he reached can actually teach you something. And this podcast is about what I believe he's telling us. At least it's what I gleaned from uh, from his loss. And it comes from you know an interview from the past, uh, the origin of which I can't really tell you. I don't remember. I just I just heard this and I heard him say this. Um, but he would he said I would continually ask myself in an interview. This was early on when he was uh, I think he he left high school and went directly into the pros. Uh, however, it was sometime either high school or as he was going into the pros. He asked himself this question: He's how could I? How can I? become a better player tomorrow than I am today? That's the question that he would ask himself, and that was the question that continually drove him to perfect his skills 
as a player. And we all have something when we are good at that we're good at, and we 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 approach it from a, a certain standpoint. And evidently, though, this question, based on another interview, was was a driving force behind other aspects of success in his personal life, his family, his his children, his foundation, and the wisdom. Kobe displayed in asking this question of himself over and over again got me thinking about its very essence and how that essence is rooted in sovereignty and our alchemy and striving to live beyond the 3D illusion of what other people thought possible. Because it's obvious when you start breaking records and, and, and things of that nature, and we, we all know people who, who do that, it is, there's, there's a driving force within them. They have, they own they, their sovereignty. They've taken a responsibility for their thoughts, words, feelings, and actions. They, they have taken responsibility for their mind, body, and spirit, and moving it forward. And what, what, um, and and that responsibility drives them to continually evolve and transform as human beings. I hope, definitely as uh, people at the peak of at the height of their their profession their career path, whatever that may be. And you have to be thinking of so- from sovereignty just to ask yourself the question of how you can be better at something tomorrow than you are today. And I, I find it incredibly profound. You know, this, cr- this question has incredible relevance in every area of your life. Think about this. If you were to ask yourself, how can I be better at work through working through events and challenges tomorrow than I am today? How can I be a better partner to my mate tomorrow than I am today? How can I be a better friend tomorrow than I am today? How can I be better at getting over loss tomorrow than I am today? How can I be better at my hobby, my the, the things I love in life, the things I'm gifted at doing tomorrow than I am today? How can I be more prosperous tomorrow than I am today? How can I be a better person tomorrow than I am today? How can I be a better student tomorrow than I am today? How can I be more forgiving of myself tomorrow than I am today? How can I be a better musician, singer, dancer tomorrow than I am today? How can I be a better carpenter tomorrow than I am today? How can I be better at connecting with people tomorrow than I am today? I could go on and on. I mean, the the the, the list is, is endless, and I really want you to kind of take this question and, and really run with it in your own life. As I was writing these questions that I just stated to you, I, I could feel the energy they created and how they expand in for inspiration, creativity, genius, and energy. Just raw energy. Can you imagine how Kobe felt when he asked himself this question the question of how he could be a better basketball player tomorrow than today, I'll bet it powered his work ethic to an entirely new level and intuited entirely new ways of perfecting his ability to play the game. And that's really what this is about. For you, if you start asking this question in the various aspects of your life, what will happen? Pay attention. You never know. You know I know you feel what I'm saying. I know you can feel it. And you can sense the innate power that emanates from this question. It's so simple, yet, again, profound. Start asking this question right away and see where it takes you and be mindful of how it makes you feel. Although Kobe Bryant no longer roams this earthly plane, by asking yourself this question and sharing its power with others, you bless him with immortality and give his time here on earth greater meaning. And because his level and because his le- legacy really will be transforming your life and the lives of others for the better. If his loss has affected you more than you thought it would, if it's merely made you become introspective, rest assured, this is not going to be the last hero in your life that's going to pass, or the last person you've cared about, even though you didn't really know them. Know him. Turn his loss into a positive for you. Let it be a reminder to cherish those who grace your life every single day, whether you know them or not, and to repair broken connections with family and friends. 
Let it also remind you to love yourself first because you must love yourself before you can fully love another. That's it for this episode. Short and sweet. Take it, run with it, see how it makes you feel. Thank you for listening and sharing this podcast. And remember, it's your responsibility to make every single day the day you really want it to be. Take care. Bye-bye.